Welcome to the Boundless Word video podcast from St. Matthew Lutheran in Hawthorne Woods, Illinois. And today we'll be reading Luke chapter 8 and we'll be praying Psalm 104. So let's begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Luke chapter 8. Soon afterward, he went on through cities and villages, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him, and also some women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary, called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out, and Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod's household manager, and Susanna, and many others who provided for them out of their means. And when a great crowd was gathering, and people from town after town came to him, he said in a parable, A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell along the path, and was trampled underfoot, and the birds of the air devoured it. And some fell on the rock, and as it grew up, it withered away, because it had no moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up with it, and choked it. And some fell into good soil, and grew and yielded a hundredfold. As he said these things, he called out, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And when his disciples asked him what this parable meant, he said, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of God, but for others they are in parables, so that seeing they may not see and hearing they may not understand. Now the parable is this, The seed is the word of God, the ones along the path are those who have heard. Then the devil comes and takes away the word, from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved and the one on the rock the ones on the rock are those who when they hear the word receive it with joy but they have no root they believe for a while and in time of testing fall away and as for what fell among the thorns they are those who hear but as they go on their way they are choked by the cares and riches and pleasures of life and their fruit does not mature as for that in the good soil They are those who, hearing the word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart and bear fruit with patience. No one, after lighting a lamp, covers it with a jar or puts it under a bed, but puts it on a stand so that those who enter may see the light. For nothing is hidden that will not be made manifest, nor is anything secret that will not be known and come to light. Take care, then, how you hear, for to the one who has more will be given. And from the one who has not, even what he thinks that he has will be taken away. Then his mother and his brothers came to him, and they, but they could not reach him because of the crowd. And he was told, Your mother and brothers are standing outside desiring to see you. But he answered them, My mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and do it. One day he got into a boat with his disciples, and he said to them, Let us go across to the other side of the lake. So they set out. And as they sailed, he fell asleep, and and a windstorm came down on the lake, and they were filling with water and were in danger. And they went and woke him, saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. And he awoke and rebuked the wind and the raging waves, and they ceased, and there was calm. He said to them, Where is your faith? And they were afraid, and they marveled, saying to one one another, Who is this, that he commands even winds and water, and they obey him? And they sailed to the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. When Jesus had stepped out on the land, there met him a man from the city who had demons. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he had lived in a house, but among the t- not in a house, but among the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out, fell down before him, and said with a loud voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many a time it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the desert. Jesus then asked him, What is your name? And he said, Legion. For many demons had entered him, and they begged him not to command them to depart into the abyss. Now a large herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside, and they begged him to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. 
Then the demons came out of the man and entered the pigs, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and drowned. When the herdsmen saw what had happened, they fled and told, told it in the city and in the country. Then people went out to see what had happened, and they came to Jesus and found the man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. And those who had seen it told them how the demon-possessed man had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked him to depart from them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him, but Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. And he went away, proclaiming throughout the whole city how much Jesus had done for him. Now when Jesus returned, the crowd welcomed him, for they were all waiting for him. And there came a man named Jairus, who was a ruler of the synagogue. And falling at Jesus' feet, he implored him to come to his house, for he had only a daughter, about twelve years of age, and she was dying. As Jesus went, the people pressed around him, and there was a woman who had a discharge of blood for twelve years. And though she had spent all her living on physicians, she could not be healed by anyone. She came up behind him and touched the fringe of his garment, and immediately her discharge of blood ceased. And Jesus said, Who was it that touched me? When all denied it, Peter said, Master, the crowds surround you and are pressing in on you. But Jesus said, Someone touched me, for I perceive that power has gone out from me. And when the woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling and falling down before him, declared in the presence of all the people why she had touched him and how she had been immediately healed. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. While he was still speaking, someone from the ruler's house came and said, Your daughter is dead. Do not trouble the teacher anymore. But Jesus, on hearing this, answered him, Do not fear. Only believe, and she will be well. And when he came to the house, he allowed no one to enter with him except Peter, John, and James, and the father and mother of the child. And all were weeping and mourning for her. But he said, Do not weep, for she is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him, knowing that she was dead. But taking her by the hand, he called, saying, Child, arise. And her spirit returned, and she got up at once. And he directed that something should be given to her to eat. And her parents were amazed, but he charged them to tell no one what had happened. Again, a couple different stories here in Luke chapter 8, but two things stand out to me that I just wanted to briefly share with you. The demon-possessed man in the region of the Gerasenes wants to go with Jesus after he has been healed. But Jesus says, I want you to go home instead and proclaim what has been done to you by God. Here, Jesus heals a daughter who is dead, raises her to life. But he then says, don't tell anyone what has happened. It's interesting how Jesus goes back and forth on this. Some he, tell, he tells them, go ahead and tell somebody. And some he says, don't tell them. I think Jesus is, again, controlling the story so that, one, he can freely move about without crowds pressing in on him where he couldn't move, like we have at the beginning of this where he's going to Jairus' house and he doesn't even realize who it is around him that's been touching him, but he does perceive that faith touched him, power went out. So some people are told not to tell. And of course, I think anyway, that that is temporary until after the resurrection then tell everybody what's happened so that others may know the good news about Jesus. Same thing with us here. And now let's continue with our prayers. And we will be praying Psalm 104. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty, covering yourself with light as with a garment, stretching out the heavens like a tent. He lays the beams of his chambers on the waters, and he makes the clouds his chariot. He rides on the wings of the wind. He makes his messengers winds, his ministers a flaming fire. He set the earth on its foundations so that it should never be moved. You covered it with the deep as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains. 
At your rebuke they fled. At the sound of your thunder they took to flight. The mountains rose, the valleys sank down to the place that you appointed for them. You set a boundary that they may not pass, so that they might not again cover the earth. You make springs gush forth in the valleys, they flow between the hills. They give drink to every beast of the field, the wild donkeys quench their thirst. Beside them the birds of the heavens dwell, they sing among the branches. From your lofty abode you water the mountains, the earth is satisfied with the fruit of your work. You cause the grass to grow for the livestock, the plants for man to cultivate, that he may bring forth food from the earth, and wine to gladden the heart of man, oil to make his face shine, and bread to strengthen man's heart. The trees of the Lord are watered abundantly, the cedars of Lebanon that he planted. In them the birds build their nests, the stork has her home in the fir trees. The high mountains are for the wild goats. The rocks are a refuge for the rock badgers. He made the moon to mark the seasons. The sun knows it's time for setting. You make darkness and it's and it is night when all the beasts of the forest creep about. The young lions roar from their prey, seeking their food from God. When the sun rises, they steal away and lie down in their dens. Man goes out to his work and to his labor until the evening. O Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Here is the sea, great and wide, which teems with creatures innumerable, living things both small and great. There go the ships, and Leviathan, which you formed to play in it. These all look to you, to give them their food in due season. When you give it to them, they gather it up, when you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. Who looks on the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have being. May my meditation be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. Let sinners be consumed from the earth, and let the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. And we do praise you, Lord, for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, who forgives all our sins through his death and resurrection. You also provide for us our food and our drink and our shelter. This world, you take care of it all because of your great love for us. And so, Lord, we pray for your healing and your provisional care, and we will praise you and we will bless you. In the name of Jesus, who also taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you will keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hand I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. And now go in the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thanks for joining me today. I pray you will join me again next time.